In this video, we're going to learn about systems of linear equations. A system of linear equations in two variables consists of two equations. To do this generically, let's say that our first equation is ax plus by equals c. So this is a linear equation because you can see that the variables x and y don't have squares. It's not written in slope-intercept form. It's not written like y equals mx plus b, but you could solve for y and it would be written that way. Uh, but for systems, we typically like to see them in this, what we call standard form, where we have the variables both on one side and then the constant, which is c in this case, is on the other side. So say when you graph this linear equation, it looks like a line like this. So this is the equation ax plus by equals c. Now, in order to make it a system, we have to have two equations. So our second equation, we'll go ahead and write using different coefficient letters. So dx plus ey equals f. Again, this is a linear equation. The coefficients are d and e, and the constant is f. You can see the variables x and y. Again, they don't have any squares or cubes or anything higher. And let's say when we graph this equation, it looks something like this, right? Whatever the line looks like, that just depends on what the coefficients d and e and f are. So this is dx plus ey equals f. Now, when we're solving a system of linear equations, we are looking for the ordered pair that simultaneously satisfies both equations in the system at the same time. So if you look at that graph, what ordered pair, what x and y value simultaneously satisfies both the red and the blue line together at the same time? Can you see where that point lives? So the ordered pair x, y that satisfies both equations at the same time is the intersection point of the two lines, of the two equations. So that is the solution. So when we're given a system like this one, we are looking to solve for the x and the y that satisfies both equations at the same time. Now there are a number of different ways to solving a system of linear equations. The first being graphing, right? You could graph the two, two lines and look for the intersection point. But more efficient methods exist using algebra. The first method we'll talk about is the substitution method. For this example, we're going to use the substitution method to solve the system. So here is my system. I have two linear equations, 2x plus 3y equals 1. So this is like ax plus by equals c. And then I have my second equation, negative x plus y equals negative 3. So this is like dx plus ey equals f. Uh, from the previous page. So again, one thing I could do here is I could graph this and we could look at the intersection point of the two lines, but the substitution method is a little bit quicker um, and more, usually more accurate than graphing. In order to do the substitution method, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to solve one equation for one variable. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the bottom equation because that equation is going to be really easy to solve um, for the variable y. So here's the bottom equation. If I solve for y, I get x minus 3. So that's step one. Solve one equation. It doesn't matter which. I chose the bottom one because it was easier, but you could easily use the top one as well and it would still give you the right answer. So we solved for the variable y. And again, it didn't have to be y, it could be the x if we wanted to, but just make your life easy. So this was really just one step, move that negative x over and y is already solved for. The second step in the process is to then substitute this expression that we just found right here. So we said that y is equal to x minus three. We're going to substitute it into the equation for that variable into the equation that we haven't used yet. So that's the second step. So into the top equation, 2x plus 3y equals 1, we want to replace y with the expression x minus 3, because that's what we solved the bottom equation for y as. 
And so now when we look at this equation, you notice that it only has x's, which is good. That means we can solve for x. So if I go ahead and clean it up a bit, I'll get x equal to 2. So I'm not done yet, right? You get, get excited when you find what x equals. But remember that the solution to a system is not just an x. It's an x and a y. So the third step in the procedure is to substitute our answer for x that we got right here into one of the original equations so that we can find y. So we're going to take this value of x, and we're going to plug it in either into this x in this equation or this one. Either one, it should give us the same answer, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. Again, you know, make it easy on yourself, make life easy. So let's just say that we take the, the bottom equation, negative x plus y equals negative 3. So that's going to be negative 2, right, because if x was 2, so if we have negative x plus y equals negative 3. So now if we add 2 to both sides, we'll get that y is equal to negative 1. So my solution is the ordered pair to negative 1. In other words, these two equations here from our system, they intersect each other at this point. Let's go ahead and graph it and see if this is true. So I have a set of axes here, and if I were going to graph the equation 2x plus 3y equals 1, the easiest way to do it would probably be to get it into slope-intercept form. So that means solve for y. So we end up with negative 2 thirds x minus 1 third. So I could go ahead and start with a y-intercept of negative 1 third and rise to run 3. Or maybe I'll try and find a clever point um, that's an integer value. So let's see here. If I plugged in 3, what do I get out? So make sure that you make these a plus right here. Um, I had just written them as a negative. But when I plug in 3, the y value that I get out is negative uh, 1.67 or um, negative 5 thirds as a fraction. So in other words, the point 3 comma negative 1.67 is um, on the graph. So let's go ahead and plot that point. So 3 for x, and then negative 1.67 is about right there. And then the other point I'll use is our y-intercept, which is a positive third. So that's right about there. And then I'll draw the line between those two. So notice how, notice how when I graph that line, I do go through that point to negative 1. There it is right there. So let's go ahead and graph the other line. We'll do this in another color here. So our other line was negative x plus y equals negative 3. If we go ahead and solve for y, actually we already did that in step 1 when we solved the equation in the system, we get x minus 3 as our equation. So that's going to be a y-intercept of negative 3. And then we just rise 1, run 1 to get subsequent points. And so here's our other line. And there you have it. They do intersect at that point to negative 1. So that is the solution to our system. So that's one way of solving this problem. Um, the other way, besides the substitution method, is to use the elimination method. So let's actually do the same system one more time, um, and I'll teach you the elimination method. So the technique behind the elimination method, or some other books will call it the addition method, is to multiply one or both equations in the system by a number so that when you add the equation vertically, so when you combine like terms, when I add the x's, I add the y's, and I add the constants, one of the variables cancels out. So now you can see why it's important to have these equations in standard form instead of uh, mx plus b form. Because when they're in standard form, you get the x's on top of the x's, the y's lined up on the y's, and the constants are both on the other side of the equation. So in this problem, we're only going to have to multiply one equation by a number. And there's a lot of choices here, but one of the natural choices is to multiply the bottom one by the number 2. So if I multiply this entire equation by 2, it becomes negative 2x plus 2y equals negative 6. I'm going to leave the top equation as is. I don't need to multiply it by anything. So that's just going to stay 2x 
plus 3y equals 1. So now what you notice is that when I add these two equations vertically, so I'm going to add here, big plus sign, I'm combining my like terms. So 2x and negative 2x make no x's. But 3y and 2y make 5y, and negative 6 and positive 1 make negative 5. So what you noticed that by design, because I multiplied by the bottom equation by 2, I found a way to cancel out one of the variables. That left me an equation with a single variable, and so I can solve. So now you can see that I get y is equal to negative 1. And then the final step, just like in the, the substitution method, is to substitute that value back into the original equation so that you can find the remaining variable. So in this case, that's going to be x. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute the value of negative 1 in for the variable y. So that's going to be right here. And then I want to solve this equation. So this is negative x minus 1 is equal to negative 3. Add 1 to both sides. Then we'll divide by negative 1 to get rid of the negative on the x. And we get x is equal to, to positive 2. So there are two values for our ordered pair. 2, negative 1 is the solution to the system using the elimination method. Now, which method you use is up to you. Sometimes a system will be more set up to use the addition method, and sometimes the system will require the substitution method as, as an easier means to the end. But both methods should work every time. So let's do another example here together. I have the system 2x plus y equals 4 and negative 6x minus 3y equals negative 12. I can use whatever method I want. So it would be pretty straightforward to use the substitution method and solve for y, or we could use the elimination method and cancel out one of the variables. Let's practice the elimination method. So let's go ahead and say that we want to cancel the y's out this time. So I want to be able to add this positive y to this negative 3y and have them cancel out. Well, in order to do that, since this one's negative and this one's positive, I just need them to have the same coefficients. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3, right? Not negative 3, just positive 3, so that I get 6x plus 3y equals 12. And I'm not going to do anything to the bottom equation. I'm just going to leave it as is because I can already see that my y's are going to cancel out. So there they go, right? They cancel each other out. But look at the 6's, positive 6x and negative 6x. Those also cancel out. So on this side, I have 0. What about on the other side of my equation? What's positive 12 and negative 12? Well, they also make 0. So what happened in this problem? I didn't do anything wrong, it's just that my variables canceled out and I was left with the equation zero equals zero. Is zero equals zero a true statement? It is. Zero equals zero is a true statement. When this happens, it means we have an infinite number of solutions. How can we have an infinite number of intersection points of two lines? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two equations and figure out why that is. So in order to graph these, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is to put them in mx plus b form so that I know exactly what their slope and their y-intercept are. So 2x plus y equals 4 is the equation y equals negative 2x plus 4. And then on the other hand, I have negative 6x minus 3y equals negative 12. So I'll go ahead and move the 6x over. Then I'll divide by negative 3, which will give me negative 2x plus 4. Look at that. What did we get? We got the exact same two equations. So when we graph these two equations, what, what's that picture going to look like? So negative 2x plus y plus 4, sorry is this line right here. And so I did it in green, but if I did it in black for this one, it's the same exact equation, so it's the same exact line. So where do those lines intersect? They intersect everywhere, right, that's on that line. So all of these points are intersection points. 
So what X values can all of those intersection points assume? Well, the domain of this line is all real numbers. So the X here is gonna be all real numbers, but what about the Y values? Which Y values are we hitting? Well, for each specific X, there is a specific Y that falls on the line according to this equation. So the way that we're gonna say that there's an infinite number of solutions is to describe them according to the line that they fall on. So they are every point, so every x, y value point of the form y equals negative 2x plus 4. So our solution set, so we have an infinite number of solutions and they're all the points on this line. Our solution set is the set of ordered pairs, the set of x, y's, such that y must follow this rule, negative 2x plus 4. So that's how we write our solution for this problem. When we are faced with a situation like this, the, what's happening is that the two equations are actually the same equation. And so we can think of these lines as being stacked on top of one another. We call these two lines when they are stacked on top of each other like this, coincident lines. They coincide with one another. The other thing that you can see up here is in the original equations, you can tell that these are actually the same equation. This one is just a multiple of negative three of this equation up here. So if one equation is a multiple of another equation, you have coincident lines. And what happens in the solving process, whether you use the addition method or the elimination method, is that all of your variables cancel out in the problem. And as long as you end up with a true statement, like zero equals zero, then you have an infinite number of solutions. The next example I'm gonna do is gonna be similar to this, but instead of ending up with a true statement, we're gonna end up with a false statement, and you're gonna see how in this example, we actually have no solution. So here's our next example. We have a system 2x plus y equals one, and 4x plus 2y equals three. And what you're gonna see in this example, like I mentioned, is there is no solution. So regardless of the method we use, elimination or addition, I'm gonna go ahead and use addition again, uh, just so you can kind of compare it to the last example. So I wanna go ahead and eliminate, let's eliminate y um, again this time. So right here I have a two y, a positive two y, and here I have a positive y. In order to get these to cancel each other out or eliminate when I add them together, I need one of them to be negative and one of them to be positive, and then I need them to have basically the same coefficients. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this top equation by negative two. So that's gonna give me negative four x minus two y equals negative two. I'll leave the bottom equation as is because I don't need to multiply it by anything in order to get my y's to cancel out. And now when I add these two equations vertically, you can again see here that not only do my y's cancel out, but my x's also cancel out. So I have zero on the left-hand side of the equation, but on the right-hand side of the equation, negative two plus three is one. Zero does not equal one in the real numbers. So this is not true. So when your variables cancel out and you're faced with an untrue equation, there is no solution to this system. Why is there no solution to this system? How can two lines never intersect each other? What is going on graphically that allows this to happen? So to see that, we could go ahead and graph 2x plus y equals one. So again, solving for y here, we get negative 2x plus one. And then our other equation, 4x plus 2y equals 3. If I solve for y, I'll get negative 2x plus 3 halves. So there's my two equations. And if I graph them on a set of axes, what do you notice? So I'm just going to do a real quick sketch of what's going on here. Negative 2x plus 1. So I have a y intercept of 1 and then a slope a negative slope of two. So rise, rise two, run one in a falling direction. So here's that line. And then I'll do my other line here in blue. So three halves is the y-intercept here. 
So that is uh, one and a half. So that y-intercept is about there. But again, I'm going to rise to run one uh, in the falling direction so that that line, the blue line, looks like that. So those two lines, according to my algebra, say that they never intersect. The reason that they never intersect, and I have no solution to this system, is because they have the same slope. In other words, these lines are parallel. So let's go ahead and add that to our system, our solution here. No solution to the system because the lines are parallel. Parallel lines never intersect. And so whenever you have two parallel lines, you're going to have no solution. So what are the different types of solutions when you're solving a system? So the, the first possible instance, the first possible type of solution when solving a system is what we initially saw. If you have two linear equations, those lines, they never change direction. They intersect each other at one point in time. So this is one solution. That is a possibility. Then we saw an example where we had an infinite number of solutions because the two lines were coincident lines. They basically overlapped each other, and so they intersected at an infinite number of places. So an infinite number of solutions means you have coincident lines. And then the third situation we came across is when our two lines were parallel. So in other words, parallel lines have the same slope. And if they rise and run at the same rate, they're never going to turn and intersect each other. So with parallel lines, you have no solution. But just remember, though, when you have the infinite number of solutions, the way that you want to present your answer is as a set of ordered pairs such that you write the equation of, of the line. Because remember, they're the same line, so it's just the equation. And that's how you want to present your answer for infinite number of solutions. So you maybe have done... Um, systems of linear equations in two variables before. So all of the examples that we've seen so far have consisted of two variables, but it is possible to bump that up to more than two variables. So let's look at examples where we solve systems with three variables. Graphically, what does it mean to solve an equation with three variables? Think about that. So a system with three variables will have a variable x, a variable y, and a variable z. So this is what an equation in three variables might look like. So you still have your x and your y axis, but now we've thrown in a third axis. And it's kind of hard to draw this, but if this is our x and our y axis, the z axis is going to come straight out of the computer screen in the third dimension. So this dotted line here is going back, going back into the computer screen. So this is a three-dimensional axis. And so when we plot systems that fall on these three-dimensional axes, we are looking for the intersection of planes, um, which oftentimes is can be a line or it can just be a point. But the point is not just an xy point, it's an xyz point. So the solution to a system is an ordered triple, not an ordered pair. The ordered triple is represented as x, y, z. So what would a system look like? So here's one equation, ax plus by c plus cz equals d. The next equation would be something like ex plus fy plus gz equals h, and the third equation might be ix plus jy plus kz equals l. So this is now our system. It has three equations for three variables instead of two equations for two variables. And our solution is going to be the ordered triple 
X, Y, Z. So here's a better image than what I can draw by hand of what this solution to a, a triple system would look like. So you could have your ordered triple, just one single point, X, Y, Z, um, and that would be right here in the, with the intersection of these three points, or these three planes, I should say. So this would be the point X, Y, Z. And um, that, e each the blue, the green, and the red, they represent one of those three equations. So those three equations are planes, not just lines. In this example, we see, again, three distinct equations represented as planes. So, you know, maybe the green one is the AX plus BY plus CZ equals D. Maybe the red one is the EX plus FY plus GZ equals H, right? And then the blue one is the third equation. You can see that they're all distinctly different, right? But the way that they intersect each other is as a line. And so the solution here is an infinite number of solutions and they are represented as a line. So the way that you would say that is you would say the set of X, Y, Z's such that, and then you could say something like X is any real number. And then you have to have a rule for how Y and Z behave according to X. So you might say, you know, Y equals, I don't know, AX plus B and Z equals CX plus D. And that's how you would write your, your set is one of the variables ranges freely. So in this case, I let X range freely. And then both Y and Z have to follow some rule according to the variable X. Now, on the other hand, we also know that it's possible to get no solution. So here are three images of what it would look like with no solution. So again, each of these planes represents one of the equation in the system. And you can see that two of the equations are intersecting each other at a time, but nowhere are all three of them intersecting each other simultaneously. So there is no solution to this system because they don't all intersect each other at the same time. Same with this picture here. We can see that green and red are intersect and blue and red intersect, but blue and green don't intersect. Now what's going on with this third image here? All three planes are what? They're parallel, so not, none of them intersect each other. And that's another instance where we get no solution. All right, here we go. We're gonna solve this triple system. So I have three equations, each with three variables here x, y's, and z's. And notice that it is okay if one of your equations doesn't have one of the variables because it just means the coefficient was zero. Um, in this example, each one of them has an x, y, and z. But it is important to have three relationships or three equations between these variables in order to solve for three variables. We do need three equations. So what I like to do to keep things organized is I actually like to label these equations um, A, B, and C, or even write them in different colors if you have different colors to use. That way I can reference them as I'm going through the solving process. So the method for solving a system is going to be to use both the elimination and the substitution method as necessary. So having a good understanding of both of those methods um, is important. And the way that we're going to go about this with three equations is you choose two of them to work with at a time to eliminate one of the variables. And you kind of keep chipping away at it two equations at a time. So I'm going to choose equations A and B. So I'm going to choose the first two equations and I'm going to pick a variable to eliminate using those two equations. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate Y. And again, you know, it doesn't matter which two you choose first, and it doesn't matter which variable you choose to um, eliminate first, but you just have to pick one and go with it. So A, I'll do here in red. So X minus 2Y plus 3Z equals 7. And B, I'll go ahead and do in blue. And I'm trying to eliminate Y. So I'm going to use the elimination or the addition method. Right? So if I add these two y's together, that means that I need this positive y to be a 2y so that it cancels out with this negative 2y. So I am going to multiply the bottom equation by 2, right? not negative 2, just 2, so that I get 4x plus 2y plus 2z equals 8. 
right? Whenever you multiply an equation by a constant, make sure you do the entire equation. It's really easy to forget to multiply that 4 and turn it into an 8. I'm going to leave the top equation as is because I don't need to manipulate it in order to get the y's to cancel out, right? Don't try and do too many things at once. We're just focusing on the letter y right now. So when I add this equation, the y's cancel out, and I'm left with 5x plus 5z equals 7 plus 8, which is 15. What I notice about this equation is that it is a multiple of 5, so I can reduce it to x plus z equals 3. Either one is fine, but if I can work with smaller numbers, I will. So my next step, so that was step 1, my next step is to play that game again with a different two equations. So instead of choosing A and B again, let's go ahead and choose equation A and equation C to eliminate the same variable. We're going to eliminate Y again. So equation A, I'll, again I'll do that in red, X minus 2Y plus 3Z equals 7. Equation C here I did in green, so 3X plus 2Y minus 2z equals negative 10. And if I'm trying to eliminate y, I want to cancel this negative 2y and this 2y out. Well, they already do cancel out, so I don't need to multiply either of those equations by anything. So when I do that, they go away, but I do have 4x's, and I have 3z plus negative 2z, which is 1z, is equal to negative 3. So now what you notice, if I look at this equation here and this equation here, they both contain the same variables, just x and z, right? I did that by design because I chose to eliminate y using a and b and then using equations a and c. I eliminated y so that I would be left with two equations that contain x's and z's. So my third step in the process is to solve the new system that I've created with these two new equations for the variables x and z. So I have 4x plus z equals negative 3, and I have x plus z equals 3. So let's go ahead and use the substitution method here. I'm going to go ahead and solve this bottom equation for uh, z. So z is negative x plus 3. And so then I'm going to go ahead and take this expression for z, and I'm going to plug it in to this z right here, because I haven't used it yet. So I have 4x plus negative x plus 3 is equal to negative 3. And so I want to go ahead and solve this equation. So that's going to be 4x minus x plus 3 equals negative 3. That's going to be 3x plus 3 equals negative 3. Subtract 3 from both sides, so I get 3x equals negative 6. Therefore, x equals negative 2. Now again, don't get too excited. We're not done yet. We've only found one of the variables. I can go ahead and find z relatively quickly because I can plug this value for x right here. So I'll get negative negative 2 plus 3. So that's going to be 5. So z equals 5. And again, don't get too excited because what do I still need to find? I need to find y. So my last step is to return to one of the original equations, doesn't matter which one you choose, and to use z equals 5 and x equals negative 2 to plug into the variables for x and z to find y. I think choice b here is a solid choice. So let's go ahead and use that equation for our final step. Step four is to solve for y here. So if I replace x in this equation and z in this equation with what I just found them to be, so remember z was 5 and x was negative 2, I can solve for this remaining variable here, y. And so if I do that, so I'll have negative 4 plus y plus 5 equals 4, which means that y plus 1 equals 4, 
Therefore, y equals 3. So my solution, running out of space here, I'll put it up here. My solution is the ordered triple. So x was negative 2, y was 3, and z is 5. So we can definitely use systems of equations to do word problems, but I think for the last video or for the last example in this video, I'm going to show you a system where we actually end up with an infinite number of solutions. So those were those um, planes that intersected in the shape of a line rather than intersecting in one point. So our system that's given to us here is x minus 2y minus z equals 8. So let's call that equation A. And then 2x minus 3y plus z equals 23. So we'll, that, we'll call that equation B. And then 4x minus 5y plus 5z equals 53. We'll call that equation C. So for step one, let's go ahead and choose two equations to eliminate one of the variables. Again, this is a matter of choice. It doesn't matter what you choose to eliminate, and it doesn't matter which two you choose to use. Um, but what I see first is to use equations A and B to eliminate the letter Z. So if I eliminate Z using equations A and B, it'll look like this. So you might have already noticed that I don't need to multiply either of these equations by anything because the Z's already have opposite signs of the same coefficient. And so when I add these two equations vertically, they immediately cancel out. And I'm left with 3x minus 5y is equal to 31. So there's one equation that I'm going to use to create a new system. The second step in this process here is let's go ahead and choose another two equations. Um, how about a and c to eliminate... Um, Z again, right? It has to be the same letter. So I'm going to choose equations A and Z to eliminate, or A and Z to eliminate Z. So again, I have X minus 2Y minus Z equals 8. And then C here I did in green. So 4X minus 5Y plus 5Z equals 53. And the Z's don't immediately cancel out here. So I have a negative Z and a positive 5Z. I want to make this negative z a 5 as well so that they do cancel out. So let me go ahead and move this over so I have a little more space. So to eliminate z, I'm going to need to multiply the top equation by 5 so that I have 5x minus 10y minus 5z equals 40. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the bottom equation as is. I'm not going to multiply it by anything because that I can see that my z's will go ahead and cancel out now. So I will be left with 9x's and I will be left with negative 15 y's, but the z's go away and then my constants become 93. So now I have these two equations that form my new system that will allow me to solve for the variables x and y. So that's step three. So I'll take 3x minus 5y equals 31 and 9x minus 15y equals 93. So you might be looking at those two equations and notice there's already something fishy going on. They seem to be multiples of themselves, right? So let's just say you didn't see it. Let's go ahead and multiply this top equation by negative 3 so that I can get my x's to cancel out. So I'll have negative 9x plus 15y equals negative 93. And I'll be able to leave my bottom equation as is. 9x minus 15y equals positive 93. And so now when you add them, you can see that the x's cancel out and the y's cancel out, leaving us with 0 on the left. Negative 93 and positive 93 gives a 0 on the right, which is a true statement. So this is a true equation, which means there are an infinite number of solutions. 
So in other words, our solution set is a line, right? Infinite number of solutions on a line. So let's talk about how do we figure out what that line is. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this equation again right here, one of the equations from the system. So I'm just gonna choose this one, right? I used it here and here. I'm gonna take that equation and I'm gonna solve it for x. I'm gonna get a fresh page to do this. So we're trying to finish solving this system, right? By figuring out what the line is that our solutions lie on. So from the previous step, I have these two equations right here that only contain x's and y's. I'm gonna pick one of them, it doesn't matter which, to solve for one of the variables. Again, it doesn't matter which. So I choose the top equation, uh, just because the numbers are a little bit smaller to deal with, and I'm going to solve for x. So if I solve this equation for x, let's start off by moving that 5y over to the other side. So we have 3x equals 5y plus 31. Um, therefore, x equals 5 thirds y plus 31 thirds. So that's what x is equal to in terms of y. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that expression and we're going to plug it in to one of the original equations. So when I say one of the original equations, I'm talking about one of the original equations from the triple. So if I take equation A from the triple, so hopefully you're looking at that on your notes, that was x minus 2y minus z equals 8. So I'm going to take this expression that I just got for x, and I'm going to plug it in for this x right here. And what that's going to look like is it's going to look like 5 thirds y plus 31 thirds minus 2y minus z equals 8. So what you notice is that this equation only contains the variables y and z, right? x is gone because I let x be this expression. So let me go ahead and clean this up a bit. In other words, I'm going to move the 31 thirds over to the join the 8, and I'm going to combine the 5 thirds and the, two -third, or the, the negative 2y. So if you want to go ahead and change this 2y into a 6 thirds, and then on the other side, I have 8 minus 31 thirds. So 5 thirds minus 6 thirds is negative 1 third y minus z equals, so 8 minus 31 thirds, you can think of 8 as 24 thirds. Um, so that's going to be negative 7 thirds. And then let's just go ahead and solve this equation for z. Solve for z. So z is going to be, if we move the z over to the right and the 7 thirds over to the, to the left, we'll have negative 1 third y plus 7 thirds. So again, the point here is that we have an equation that involves z's and y's, no more x's. Um, but this, the way we've solved for z here is it's z in terms of y. So we want to go ahead and do that again, this basically, you know, this process here again for with another equation so that we can get um, x in terms of y. Well, we already did that, right? That was right here. So we have x equals in terms of y. So we're going to take this equation here and this equation here, and those are going to be the rules for the variables x and z so that y can range freely. So my solution is going to be the set of ordered triples x, y, z such that x equals 5 thirds y plus 31 thirds. y is any real number and z is negative 1 third y plus 7 thirds. Now, this is actually only one way of writing our answer, right? Because of what if we chose to let maybe z range freely, then we would have x in terms of z and y in terms of z. 
So let's stick with this problem for just a minute more and see what's another way of writing this solution. So coming back, coming back to this point in the problem where we had these two equations in the system that involved x and y's, um, what we had done before is we had solved uh, this top equation for x, right? But now let's go ahead and solve it for y. So if I solve for y, I'll have, let's see, negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 31, divide by negative 5, and I'll get positive 3 fifths x minus 31 fifths. So then if you remember what we did from that step is then we plugged this into one of the original um, triples. So we're going to plug into one of the original equations. And I think I chose equation A last time, so we can go ahead and do, and do, do that again. So equ equation A was x minus 2y minus z equals 8. So I'm going to take this expression for y and plug it in right there. So I'll have x minus 2 times 3 fifths x minus 31 fifths minus z equals 8. And again, what you notice here is we've eliminated this time the variable y, and we only have x's and z's. So I'm going to clean up this equation, and I'm going to solve for z, um, and uh, or sorry, solve for x in terms of z. So after a little bit of fraction, common denominators, and combining like terms, if I solve for z here, I'm going to get negative 1 fifth x plus 22 fifths. Um, sorry, not plus, huh? That's going to be a minus. Let's fix that. No, I take it back again. It is a plus. <laughs> so negative 1 fifth x plus 22 fifths. So you can see our equation here is solved for z in terms of x, just like this equation up here is solved for y in terms of x. So the way that we're going to let our solution be represented in this case is we're going to say the solution is any ordered triple x, y, z, such that x is any real number. So we let x range freely here y has to be 3 fifths of x plus 31 fifths, and z has to be negative 1 fifth of x plus 22 fifths. So that is an alternate solution um, where we let x be any real number instead of y in the previous example. Again, I could do this actually one more time, and the third solution here would be, again, any ordered triple such that, so this time, instead of letting x or y range freely, we're going to let z range freely. And I'm actually not going to do this example from start to finish because we'd have to go back to the original system and eliminate one of the other variables to begin with instead of, I can't remember what we eliminated. So in the initial ordered triple, we eliminated z first. But if we would have eliminated x or y first, we could have gotten to the part down up here where we would have had z as our variable ranging freely. And I encourage you to try that on your own. And when you, when you do that, you get x is equal to negative 5z plus 22, y is equal to negative 3z plus 7, and then you get to say that z is any real number. So maybe for our live lecture, I'll go ahead and uh, do this problem again and do it so we end up with that solution. But just so you can see all three solutions together, here, um, here was the one where we said that y could be any real number.
And so both X and Z had to be equations in terms of Y. So when you're forced to stare at all three of these together, you can see um, the patterns that are occurring in them, right? So with our first example here, X is any real number. So Y is in terms of X and Z is in terms of X. And our second solution as a potential solution, we're saying that Z is any real number. So X is in terms of Z and Y is in terms of Z. And then on this last one here, I have Y is any real number. So X is in terms of Y and Z is in terms of Y. Um, whichever one of these solutions you come up with is acceptable. My math lab will accept all three of them. You just have to pick the right boxes to fill out. 